Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Autodesk Virtual Academy. Uh, I'm Nigel Mbayek, your host for today, and excuse me, one of the customer success managers here at Kativ. Today, I'm joined by one of the tallest people in the office, <laughs> Alex Alvarez. Alex, how's it going? Not too bad, Nigel. Not too bad. Awesome. So Alex is one of the other engineers here on the team. Alex came here shortly after I did, um, but Alex's specialty uh, sits on a lot of the design automation as well as the uh, advanced manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Um, which is why Alex is here to talk to you all about the workflow between Fusion 360 and another Autodesk product called FeatureCam. I'm sure Alex will get into what that is here shortly. Um, he knows it way better than I do, so he's the perfect person to be here for that. If you have any questions about anything that we show during the webcast today or anything you know in general about your Autodesk software, let us know in the dedicated questions area and we'll go ahead and take care of that. But before we get going, anything you want to add, Alex? No, just excited to share this new workflow. Uh, again, well, not technically new workflow, right? But uh, again, it's a, a topic that we get a lot of questions on. So yep. hopefully we can shed some light on this topic. Cool. Let's go ahead and uh, get started. Yep. All right. So again, thank you guys for, for tuning in. Uh, again, like I said, my name is Alex Alvarez. I'm an application engineer here at the Team Technologies. Uh, and again, for today, we're, we are going to be talking about Fusion 360 with feature cam. And like I mentioned, it's not a new workflow, but again, why are we talking about this? Well, that's actually because there's been some recent rebranding done by Autodesk. Uh, and essentially what took place is that there is no longer a standalone feature cam software, right? So if you want to purchase feature cam now, it is going to be called or it's going to be uh, branded under the, the Fusion 360 uh, brand, essentially. So it's going to be Fusion 360 with feature cam. Uh, again, what we want to highlight here is some of the benefits to you guys. Uh, again, if you're using Fusion 360 by itself and that's all that you need, it, it doesn't really affect you guys. But for the feature cam users, that is going to have um, just a, a, a slight effect. So we do want to cover what what value does that add to you guys, right? What are some of the benefits that come along with uh, some of the, the rebranding? We do want to show some of the, the workflows between the two tools. Uh, again, that's you know, part of the reason why Autodesk did that is because again, Fusion 360 is, is a, a pretty powerful uh, CAD CAM tool that again, it gives you guys just a ton of flexibility in terms of, of data collaboration uh, and then also taking your product from design to manufacturing. Uh, so we'll dive a little bit into, into Fusion 360 and then we'll go into Feature Cam and then show what is essentially takes place. Uh, again, if you guys have any questions, feel free to let us know. We'll, we'll do our best to answer those questions. Um, I do want to go ahead and jump in, though. If you do want to learn a little bit more about um, uh, the, the essentially the rebranding that took place, we do have a blog, and we'll we'll go ahead and paste the link here in a second. Um, and you know, if it really does dive a little bit deeper into into what took place, uh, again, some of the added benefits. Uh, and then kind of shows you the, the next steps kind of moving forward for Autodesk. Uh, again, just keeping the, the PowerPoint pretty short and sweet here. So we're going to go ahead and jump in right into the software. Again, for those of you that don't know, this is going to be Fusion 360. So it's a, a really recent new tool. Uh, it's been out on the market for around five years. But again, this software has most of the lessons or really all of the, le the lessons that, that Autodesk has picked up with some of its more flagship products. So what I mean by that is, you know, they really saw that that the design and manufacturing workspaces were weren't as connected as, as they like to. Uh, and then so came along Fusion 360. So if you take a look, we have a design software, we have our design tools. Not only that, if you click down on the, the tab, the workspaces, you do have the option to jump right into the, the manufacturing workspace. So again, it's a, it's a true CAD CAM software. It's really a, a platform for your everyday design and engineer um, where they can really carry out most of their, their everyday tasks. Uh, again, with Fusion 360, one of the, the, the powers that, that comes with it is that, again, the architect behind it is relatively new. So what that means is that Autodesk is, is really easily able to add modifications to it. They're, they're able to update the software. Uh, again, they, they can release some of these, uh, the, essentially the beta options or some of the, the beta add-ins that, that they call. Uh, and if we take a look here, we have manufacturing extensions. Um, and if you guys weren't familiar with manufacturing extensions, again, if we just take a quick look at the preferences. Preview features, right? So if you take a look at, at the essentially the preferences that we have, you do have essentially access to some of the, the beta testings that Autodesk has available for, for everyone here. Uh, so you have five axis uh, collision avoidance for steep and shallow, uh, live machine data connection, right? So again, if you're gonna be doing any surfaces inspection, you can automatically pull that data from your CNC controller. 
Um, and again, you guys can kind of look through this, but point being is that they're always updating the software. They're always adding modifications to it. So again, one of the added benefits to combining Fusion and FutureCam is that you're always going to have access to this technology no matter what. And again, that's just one of the, the other reasons why Autodesk kind of rebranded FutureCam is Autodesk has a lot of, uh, Fusion, Fusion 360 has a lot of power in not only manufacturing, but also the CAD portion. Uh, and that's what I want to highlight here. So again, we're going to be essentially, you know, assuming that we're, we designed this part. Uh, again, what are we, what are we going to do next? We want to manufacture it. Of course, we can do that inside of Fusion 360, but I'm going to go ahead and, and import it into FutureCam and then kind of walk through the workflow there. So again, we have the part, our customer, you know, kind of gave us a blueprint. We designed the part and this is what we came up with. Uh, again, if you guys aren't familiar with the, the environment here, I am working under a Fusion team, right? So this is no longer my personal Fusion 360. This is a Fusion team. Um, again, if you guys want to learn a little bit more about Fusion Team, feel free to give us a call or just email me. But essentially what Fusion Team is going to allow you to do is you're going to have one admin for a specific project, right? So we have a, a single admin. He can invite people in and out. Uh, and again, inside of this project, people are going to have access to all the different files, all the different models that are, are kind of located inside of this project. So again, what that allows for the entire team is essentially just a streamlined form of, of collaboration. Uh, you don't need to set up a shared drive. You don't need to share up or set up a, a OneDrive or a Dropbox. It's essentially all being stored inside of the project. Um, and again, everyone has access to the different revisions that, that Fusion 360 has stored here. So again, once we have the part inside of Fusion, what we are going to do is we are going to go ahead and, and export this model out. So again, that's one thing that's <laughs> one caveat that I, I do want to highlight. Um, with the rebranding, there really is no magic button. Right. So what I mean by that is that inside of the manufacturing workspace, you're not going to get a magic button that's automatically going to send the model out to feature camp um, and then you're you're on your way. Right. So that's not the case. You do have to do some export. Uh, and again, when you export out, you can select the location, um, select the, essentially the file type here. In my case, uh, again, whenever I can, I, I try to go with the SMT. Right. So that's an auto to shape manager, uh, essentially file extension. Typically, I find that that gives me the, the best results. Uh, again, I haven't had any problems with Ceph files or um, you know some of the other file types. But SMT is, is usually my go-to file extension when I'm trying to export this out. So that's going to be the first step, right? So SMT export out to a specific location. We're going to go into Feature Cam, and then we're going to go ahead and import this part. Uh, again, a, a common question that I get is, well, what kind of file types do, uh, does Fe uh, Feature Cam import? And if we take a look at the import dialog box here. Uh, again, you do have a broad range of different file types that you can import, right? So again, main one being Autodesk Shape Manager. You have AutoCAD files that you can uh, you can import. And again, FutureCam does work off of uh, 2D drawings, essentially, or, or wireframes. So you can you can bring in you know certain geometry if you want to. Uh, Parasolid, SolidWorks, Katia, right? So your, your main kind of CAD software is you are able to import those, those file types. So just a heads up, again, if you guys are wondering, you know, what kind of supported files, um, these are it right here. All right, so again, this isn't gonna be a workflow for how do you, how do you program a part step by step. This is more of, of how does, uh, you know, how does FutureCam work with, with Fusion 360 in this case. Um, so again, when you have the part, you're gonna go through your setup, you're gonna, you know, set, essentially select your axis. You're going to you know, start adding a few tool paths. Here I have, you know, essentially a roughing tool path. Um, and if we take a look at it, right? So again, more of your traditional tool path where it's, a, it's essentially just a 3D pocket if you're coming from, from the, HSM, um, the HSM side. Point being though with feature cam is that it's automatically going to recognize features, right? So it, it works off of surfaces, but again, if you have features, you can automatically uh, select a, a specific toolpath and it's automatically going to apply a toolpath to that to that given feature. So again, what that means for you guys is that the programming time essentially just reduces, it, it drastically reduces, um, and you're gonna have a, a more standard uh, approach to programming, right? So what I mean by that is that if you create a, a you know, a, a toolpath for a specific feature, you're gonna have the same exact uh, toolpath day in and day out, right? So what I mean by that is that if you take a look at the pattern that we have here, we can expand this out. Right, and it's automatically going to add the operations down here. So that's one thing that a lot of people um, tend to 
tend to not quite understand with FeatureCam is that over here on your left hand side, you're gonna see the features that you program, right? So again, this is gonna be your browser. And here you're gonna have the features that you programmed. On your right hand side, you're gonna have the tool paths that get applied to it, right? So here we can see the roughing operations. We can see spot drills. Uh, again, we have warnings here saying that the, the, the tool damage is slightly smaller than the holes, which is fine. Um, and then we're gonna have the drilling operations here, right? So again, on the left hand side, you're gonna have your features, right hand side, you're gonna have your tool paths, but again, you're gonna have more of a, a, of a standard approach when it comes to, to programming these parts. Um, and again, it doesn't matter who's programming it, it it's always gonna have that same, um, that same format for it, any given tool path. Um, you can go in and change it, right? So for instance, let's say I wanted to, to bore out these holes. Um, how would I go about it, right? So what does it look like here inside of FeatureCam? So again, let's take advantage of that feature recognition, especially being that it's a you know, hole that we want to mill out. First thing is that we want to go ahead and select our features. Uh, again, we want to go ahead and, and select what kind of a feature this is going to be. In our case, it's going to be a hole. Uh, and we want to make sure that we extract the feature with feature recognition, right? Kind of let the software do all of the work for us. So again, with that in mind, um, again, we can se essentially select whether the, the, we want the holes to be only along the z-axis. Right? So do we want the software to essentially only pick up these three holes here? Um, or are we going to give it essentially just a free range for any holes that, that are on the part? So we're going to go ahead and say recognize all holes. Again, if you wanted to kind of set up a little bit more of the, um, the, the parameters here, you can go ahead and do that. But for me, it automatically picks up the holes. So, so notice what just happened here. I didn't have to create a plane. I didn't have to create an axis. Software automatically picked up that I wanted to pick up all the holes that are, you know, essentially on the part. It didn't pick up these three holes because again, I already have those holes milled out, right? So that that's already a feature that's already accounted for. Um, so it didn't create any tool path for that. So I'm going to go ahead and say select all. Picks up the two holes, and I can go ahead and say finish. And those two holes automatically got added to my feature list. And if I take a look at the tool paths on the left, right, we have those additional drills um, essentially added to that list. Now, there is an exclamation point, And again, that's an error. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about the error here. But again, just notice the difference, right? So we have warnings and we have errors. So warnings are OK. It's essentially the, the software flagging you down. Um, errors, you are going to have an issue with this and it's not, it's not going to be able to post out, right? So just keep that in mind as, as you're using the software here. So again, let's take a look at the tool path. Let's see what, what happened here, right? Or the feature. So if we go to properties, uh, again, for the most part, usually it's going to say, hey, we couldn't find a drill that was the size of this hole. What do you want to do? Right? Do you want to go ahead and, and find a, a smaller drill size or do you want to, you know, essentially apply a different strategy to it? In my case, right, I'm actually going to change the strategy. So instead of a, a drill only, I'm gonna go ahead and say drill mill, right? You can go into the, the milling options, but notice what happened under the operations, right? So before where we had a spot drill and, and just a twist drill, it now added a finishing operation, right? And that's where the milling portion comes into play. So again, that's, that's where I was mentioning that, again, the software is automatically going to try to best suit whatever your, your options are to the, the tool paths that are kind of programmed inside of, inside of the software. So again, from here, we can go ahead and say, I'm gonna go ahead and select a, a twist drill, right? I'm gonna go ahead and say, I'm gonna use that three quarter. Again, by selecting a drill that's smaller than the hole, software automatically added a rough end of finish, right? which is fine. I'm gonna go ahead and split these two tool paths up because again, the finishing tool path might be uh, something that I wanna rerun again, just in case if I didn't hit any tolerances. Um, for this one, I'm going to go ahead and select the five, in the half inch. And again, I'm just going to go ahead and select the same one for the finishing tool path here. And hit apply. Right. Again, I only changed that for hole four. I can go ahead and do that for hole five as well. And then kind of just go through the same, the same workflow here, right? So again, the twist drill is going to be that quarter inch. Half inch. And then my finishing tool path with the half inch as well. So again, I just programmed that part with essentially three different tools, right? It has four different tool paths, but again, it, I, I was quickly able to, to kind of take advantage of the feature recognition um, and then account for those, for those um, holes that were, you know, essentially not lined up to my Z axis here. So let's see what that looks like. Again, we have wireframe simulation, so we can go ahead and, and simulate this if we wanted to. 
right? And it's going to show us um, not just a, essentially what it is, right? A wireframe view of, of the tool paths. Um, again, one of the added benefits to, to feature cam, again, if you're coming from the Fusion 360 side, is you actually do get machine simulation here, right? So if you go to machine and if you hit play, you do get machine simulation. Again, you know, Autodesk has a pretty broad range library of, of different machines to select from. Um, so, so for the most part, they are going to have, have your machine here. So just keep that in mind as, as you're kind of going through it. Um, again, the software stops simulating, and that's going to be a good indication that something happened. Right. Either a collision, whether it's the tool holder or the, the actual tool itself, it's colliding with the, the, um, the stock material. Um, and if we take a look here, we can see, you know, essentially the holder is going to plunge right into that part. So it's pretty obvious that if we take a look at the wireframe or if we take a look at the, the, the tool path here, the tool was not long enough for that, for that hole, which is fine, right? I mean, we have a five axis, five axis machine, let's take advantage of it. So we'll probably want to machine out maybe, you know, certain distance and then rotate the part and then machine out the, the rest here. Uh, again, you can just quickly go in here, go to the properties. And again, all we're doing here is just modifying the depth. Uh, so we're going to say 1.5. Just apply that to this one. Notice that it automatically updates that tool path there. And then just do the same thing for this tool path here. Right, so with that done, we're going to run the simulation once again. Watch it from this side. And again, the benefit of having machine simulation is that, again, if, if the part rotates maybe a little bit too much, if something happens, it software is automatically going to point that out to you. Um, and again, you can have a little bit more peace in mind when you go out and you program some of these parts. Uh, again, but the simulation finished. Uh, again, this is a part that, that that we have so far, right? So that's exactly what I wanted. Uh, again, if you wanted to add to the stock, or if you wanted to maybe export the stock out, or maybe you wanted to do a little bit more um, more operations on this, you, you can definitely do so. Um, but again, the whole point of this this webinar is how do we handle a part modification, right? So again, we're going to assume that we finished this part. Uh, we sent it out to the customer. He was happy with it. He comes back a couple weeks later and he tells us, hey, you know, that part you did was great, but again, this, uh, essentially this bore has to be a little bit higher now. Right? So we want this to be quarter of an inch higher. Go ahead and, and make us another part with those, um, with those specifications. So I'm going to go ahead and save this out. Right? I'm going to go ahead and close the part out and I'm going to jump back into Fusion 360. Right? Again, we have the part designed in Fusion. Let's go ahead and take advantage of that. Um, and really what I want to do is just do a quick press pull. Right? So again, this is just going to be a quick modification. We know that this bore is supposed to be um, a quarter of an inch out. So we're going to extend that quarter of an inch. We're going to go ahead and say okay. And then we have essentially that difference between the, the two the two bores there. Right. And again, so exactly what I mentioned in the beginning, we're going to go ahead and save the part out. Right. We're going to go ahead and say File, Export, and again, our, you can select the location here. We're going to go ahead and say it's going to be an SMT file. And export this out. Do we want to replace it? Yes, we do. Right. So if we go back into the Adapter FM, the software is automatically going to pick up that there's been a change to that model, right? So the source file for PS Solid 7 has been updated. Um, do you want to re-import re it? And again, it gives you the option to re-import, right? It doesn't automatically just do that for you. Um, in our case, we do. We want to take advantage of, of you know, essentially all the tool paths that we have here, the setups um, and everything else, and we want to go ahead and make sure that, that we re-import this part. Now, at first glance, you might think, well, shoot, like, you know, it, it rotated the part. It kind of flipped everything around. Uh, what, what's going on here? But again, if you take a look at the, the, the dialog box, and again, this is a, you know, just another benefit to feature cam is that it's always going to walk you through exactly what it wants, right? So it has the wizards. It's going to walk you through whether you want to create a stock, whether you want to create a new setup. Um, it's going to pop up these wizards, and it's going to walk you through those, those steps um, step by step. 
right? So in this case, do you want to use a wizard to establish the initial setup? We do. Um, do you want to use the same alignment as the last import? Right? In this case, we do. So we want to go ahead and say next. Um, I'm not going to really extract any features right now because again, we, we don't have any. We already have most of them extracted here. So we're going to go ahead and say finish. Right, and it automatically overlapped the two parts right right on top of each other here, right? So again, if you take a look at the solids on the, the bottom left here, you'll notice that you have a PS solid seven and a PS solid one, right? So PS solid one being the new model that we just imported. Um, again, what I like to do typically is just hide, hide selected, right? And I'm not gonna say that all the tool paths are gonna work, right? You do wanna still go back and, and modify it. Um, so in this case, we had a, a stock. You can see that the, the stock doesn't necessarily cover the entire part. Um, so we can go ahead and take care of that. Right? So again, if we go to the initial setup here, modify the stock, we can go ahead and say resize this. Bring the dialog box out here. Right, so again, it's, it's automatically remembering the uh, the offsets that I did, right? So I had zero, 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 and I did have a, a 0.2 offset here because again, we're assuming that we had a, a dovetail connected to the machine. Um, so that's exactly what I wanted. Right? Again, it still remembers those those options that I had here. So we're gonna go ahead and say next. And we're just gonna go ahead and say finish, right? So again, there's our, our resize stock. Uh, again, for the surface milling tool path, take a look at it. Notice that it's still kind of referencing that previous model. Um, so what we can do is we can go and go into the properties, uh, again, part surfaces. Reselect your surfaces here. Uh, again, if we wanted to maybe change the, uh, the step down a little bit, right? So maybe you want to go slightly smaller, right? So go to the Z increments, we can probably change this to be 0.2, say set. And then preview the tool path. All right, and now you can see that it's taking into account the entire model there. All right, so again, with with uh, with this ABA again, I, I just wanted to show exactly what that looked like um, in, in terms of, of going through a model change and then kind of reimporting it back into Feature Cam. Uh, again, if you take a look at your initial solid, you can go ahead and say um, the solid source file, right? So if, if for whatever reason you renamed it or you changed it, um, you do want to make sure that, that you set that path correctly here. Um, so if you take a look here, it, it is referencing a specific file and a, and a specific file path. Um, again, really what this is going to do is it's just going to maintain that associativity. So if the model does change, you do want to make sure that, that um, it, it updates uh, on the feature cam side. Um, so again, that was essentially what I had. I just really the, the main point of the, the webinar here is just to highlight what, how do you handle a, a re-import. Um, again, you do want to make sure that, that you just go through some of the, the tool paths here and, and you update them because again, is, for the most part, some of them are going to update, but again, there are going to be a few that, that you need to, uh, to kind of re-update and, and re-modify there slightly. But again, the biggest thing here is that with feature recognition, it is going to speed that up and, and it is going to make things a little bit easier for you um, if it does change, right? So again, I'm going to go back, back to the presentation here. Uh, so again, just want to reiterate what we did. Uh, essentially covered the, the rebranding for Autodesk. Uh, again, it's now uh, Fusion 360 with Feature Camp. So if you are going to be buying Feature Camp in the future, uh, notice that, or just keep in mind that you are going to get Fusion 360 with um, with the product. Uh, again, we do have a, a Fusion <coughs> Fusion Friday, essentially just a webinar is based on Fusion 360 uh, once a month, and it's really just solely based on Fusion 360. So if you are going to be using Feature Cam and you're not aware of or not familiar with what Fusion 360 can do for you, um, tune into those webinars. Right? We have a, a pretty broad library as well um, of, of videos, so um, definitely watch those, see see how we can help and and um, See if you have any questions on the software. Yep, you can hang out with Alex and Brian. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, but uh, again, if there's any questions, this is a perfect time to uh, to ask away. Um, I'm not sure if any questions came through, Nigel. Yeah, let's go ahead and take care of a couple. Um, Alex, you showed five-axis milling pretty uh, exclusively. Um, what does Feature Cam do with the lathes? Yeah, so so that's a, that's a perfect 
perfect question. So there's actually a lot of functionality with, with feature cam. Uh, again, if, you, if you're going to be doing turning, uh, you know, it, it has, it has awesome turning capabilities. Uh, one of the, the biggest reasons for customers to use feature cam is actually Swiss machining as well. So um, if you're doing any kind of Swiss machining uh, where you have, you know, multi turret lathes or, or multi spindle lathes, um, this is going to be a perfect software, not only because, again, it, it handles those kind of machines or those kind of tool paths, um, but you also get the machine simulation included as well, right? So you can kind of see both turrets or both spindles kind of interacting um, at the same time. So it's, it's great to see, uh, again, and it gives just the programmer a little bit more, more confidence. Cool. Uh, but yeah, so again, feature cam, if, if I didn't explain that, uh, it does have milling, it does have turning capabilities. Um, it, it is extremely, does extremely well for Swiss machining as well. And all those different machine types. Cool, sounds good. Um, you showed some of the Fusion 360 into feature cam stuff. Mm -hmm. How does it work for our customers who may be using Inventor? Works the same exact way. So, so with uh, Inventor, you actually do have the option to export um, the the file out as a different CAD format. Uh, again, you can keep it as an Inventor part. That that works. That works fine. But again, you do have the option to export it out as a, as a SMT. So, really up to you. But again, I, I typically just stick with SMT, um, being that it doesn't really affect anything. Anyways. Let's see here. Um, there's two more questions that came in last minute, Alex, and I think these are questions you can answer because I definitely can't. Okay. Um, is this like HSM where you have to build a tool library before starting working in feature camp? So yeah, so great question. So we actually do have um, kind of standard tool libraries that, that you can use, but you do want to create that tool library because again, the the software works off of features and it, and it works off of whatever tools you have uh, available. Um, so you, it, you do have to create your tool library. Um, you do want to make sure that you have the correct fees and speeds there as well, because again, it, it, it's automatically going to add these tool paths. So you don't, the, the less work that you do for the, the modification of, of the tool paths, the better. Um, so, so yeah, it's, it's always recommended that you set up your tool library beforehand. Um, and then, Especially because then you have exactly what you're using, right? Yeah. Yeah. Cause it, it essentially the software is going to select, the tools that you have out at your, on your shop floor, right? So yeah, so definitely make sure that you have your tool library set up in place beforehand. And then the last question too, uh, can I program Swiss machine lathe or Swiss lathes with feature cam? I think we went over that. Mm -hmm. um, the answer is yes. So if you do have a Swiss lathe, you can use feature cam to go ahead and. Uh, yeah, while well, the package comes with um, with part maker and it comes with with the um, the additional software that that does the the Swiss machining. Um, so yeah, so that when you buy that package, it is going to be included with, with Swiss machine. Yep. If you have any more questions, just let us know. We'll go ahead and answer those for you. Um, I think that's it. Yeah, that's all that we have. Uh, again, this was more just the uh, covering the, uh, the, the associativity yeah, yeah. between the two softwares. Uh, we are in the, in the future going to do more just strictly f uh, feature cam workflows of how do you program your five axis mill? How do you program some of these, these more advanced machines. So if that's something that you're interested in, stay tuned and, and we'll make sure to cover those topics. Sounds good. Again, thanks, Alex, for joining yeah. us today. I will see you in the office downstairs. Sounds good. Take it easy. <laughs> Bye.